and you have to say yes to stay on the call. Um, okay. Yes, this is working. Okay, perfect. So we know who I am. We know why I'm here. I could have deleted these slides, but I do like it. Um, and the intention behind tonight's training is part two, which we'll come on to. So today is all about identifying the action you need to take to generate sales. Okay, and we're going to come a little bit more into the sales content. We've looked at the priming. And we want to bring an element of self-awareness to who you are and what, what might trip you up in selling. So selling has to be a core priority of your business, right? And in order for it to be a core priority of your business, you cannot bank on a, the diet starts on Monday, right? You cannot bank on the mentality that we're going to become someone different on Monday and then we'll sell. We have to bank on the mentality that we're gonna get better, we're gonna experiment, we're gonna learn, we're gonna trust ourselves. And we'll do that when I walk you through the small business framework that we have and you can amend that and it's a plug and play. The only time I'll do a plug and play that you can do as and when you want to grow your business. Right, so we spoke last week about the sales processes and the practices standing out from the crowd, speaking to those who are ready to buy. And like the priming of your audience, is the most important part of running your business, right? That's absolutely everything because when you speak to the people who are ready to buy, like that's the first step in selling. Like you've weeded out all of the other people and they start to see that actually, hang on, I am serious and there will be sales here. And tonight, today we're gonna to focus more on cultivating a healthy relationship with yourself so you can sell whilst navigating if we've got low energy, mental illness, if we've got a fear of visibility, high energy and really that's about bringing that element of self-awareness to you and actually being like this is me that's going to sell this isn't me that has to jump through 101 hoops and actually as I start to sell what transformation is possible and what's possible for my business okay so it goes without saying I won't tell you exactly what to do you decide what you want to implement and then you can grow your confidence from there okay so we are going to do a quick recap so Action taken. Sales is all about focus and experimentation. It's not about these things will work. So when you see things like 10K to 10, day, 10 days, 10K in 10 days, we don't know the background. We don't know how primed the audience is. Sales is about focus. This is my goal. This is what I'm aiming for. And I'm going to experiment. It's about talking to the right people and sharing a compelling message and avoid everything that's overused where possible. Um, and the easiest way to sell is if your market is an extension of buying from you. And I'm going to give you some examples of that. And this is the same across all industries. It's actually probably easier for product based industries. And I'll share you some examples because the reason that it's easier is because it's so much easier to show a product being used. Right. It's so much easier to show people enjoying that, putting on the makeup, using using the dog products like you know, like like hanging pictures on your wall it's it's not easier but like it's we can visualize that if we're selling something that's a little bit more intangible like a service we have to maybe do a little bit more work in working out what that extension of working with us looks like okay so we're going to go down our sales is in three phases one prime in your audience so by now we have quite a few content ideas on that and that's the most important part, because what we're basically doing is we're teeing people up to know that something's coming. You know, we're letting them know that something is going to be coming here and I'm going to be selling. Right. And then the selling, we have to be crystal clear that we are inviting people to buy from you and making it easy to buy from you. So today we're going to look at like no means no for me. If somebody says no, they don't want to work with me. I would always respect that. However, in the promotion of it, you can overcome objections, right? It's different on a sales call, how you want to handle that. But like in your things, we can look at common objections, like what's the value of this? We can look at common objections, like will it work for me? We can look at like common objections, like what's the time that I have to look into this? And we'll look at that in your sales content. The third thing, again, depends on whether you're doing a push period or whether you're doing a launch, is that ethical urgency. 
that reason to buy now. And like little things like I saw my emails today, Pizza Express were saying your summer sorted and, you know, they sell pizzas all year round, but they're giving me time bound offers so that I come in as soon as possible and buy the pizzas. So even if you're selling the same thing all year round, I want you to consider how you're going to encourage people to buy now and what that looks like for you. And again, we're very seldom, and I'm repeating this 101 times to take the pressure off, we're very seldom selling and growing your audience at the same time. Um, and the reason being is because we don't have the time for that message. It's different when we start to set up funnels and we start to set up different inquiries into our business. But for now, we're selling to the audience that you already have. You know, be that connections, friends of friends, if you're starting off, previous customers, but we're selling to the audience that you already have. Okay, again, quick recap, pink. These are the people that are just discovering you. Right. So these are the people they're definitely in your audience, but they're just discovering you. Turquoise, the people that like your vibe, they're like, this person is fucking amazing. I really like them. And if you share more yellow content and speak to the people who are ready to buy, you're more likely to bring the turquoise people into the yellow. If you're only sharing pink content, which is our intro posts, our top tips, you know, our broader product and business details. What we're doing is we're kind of pushing those turquoise people out into the pink, right? And we spoke about this a lot last week, but it is the reminder because I want you to start looking at how other businesses are doing this. I want you to start looking at how are the businesses speaking to the people in the yellow, you know, and how are they speaking to the people in the pink and what does that look like? And like the turquoise is your opinion. It's when you start to share your views on things, your thoughts on things, your ethos, your way of doing things. And, and it's kind of like the different, the product ones. So like the turquoise one for the products would be more insights on the product, why it's amazing, the history behind it, all of these sorts of things. Okay, and we know what success looks like. So by now you should have three to five what success looks like for people who are buying from you. If you don't have that, get that. That would be my recommendation. And it depends on whether you're doing it for what does three to five look for buying all of my products or just one product? What does three to five look for buying all of my therapies or just one therapy? You know, are all of my services, you can do it for your business as a whole, or you can do it if you're selling your business as a whole, or you can do it for a specific offer if you're selling a specific offer. Okay, here are some examples. Right. So, product based businesses, I'm just going to see. If I have this, can you just give me two seconds or if, if has everyone got their phone on them? Have you got your phone handy? Go into Instagram and look up Lumi, L-U-M-I. OK, I'll get you to do it on Instagram because it's it's like the easiest. Um, right. So and when you scroll down, you'll see what they do. It's Lumi.therapy. And they sell. Um, those cold, the, those portable cold water baths, right? So anyone who loves sea swimming, they sell the portable things. They're really reasonable, by the way, but it takes 10 weeks for delivery. They don't put that in here. Okay, but if you look everything, it's an extension of what it's like to buy from Lumi. Like they're not doing super in-depth product descriptions. What they're basically doing is they're showing me what it looks like to use their bath. Okay, so I get a feeling of what it looks like to use that bath, right? I see people sitting into it. I know that feeling from going in the water of what it's like. They describe it. They go into great detail, you know, and it's customers too. So, you know, you can do this yourself by using the bath. If I was selling that bath, that's what I do. But they're also selling a lifestyle. Okay, so that's one of the really good examples that I was like, that's an absolutely fantastic one to look at. Um, the next one is if you look at Primark Beauty, right? And this is for more ranges. So I was thinking like Hattie, when she has ranges of things, what they basically do is they show what it's like to hold the product in your hand. Okay, so everything is somebody touching the product, somebody feeling. They have very few product photos. And what they'll always do, by the way, so when we look at overcoming price objections, they always show it with the price on it because it's cheap. Um, the planet's weeping, but Brian Mark of three pound eyeshadows, you know, but it's 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 a vision of them holding on to it. OK, so they're holding on to that and they've got it. 
do you mean the first one, Hattie, or the second one? Sorry, Hattie's like, what's the name of it? The first one is Lumi, L-U-M-I, and the second one's the Primark Beauty. Oh, I can hear that, so I'm just going um, to... I'm coming, I'm coming back here so we can get back in. Like, they've got little things like the hydrating the hydration facial cleanser and then this this example here was for a stand-up desk right and again it's so much easier to do this for product-based businesses but I will come on to some examples for service-based businesses as well because it makes a huge difference and just the reason that I don't have them in here is because I will have them I will have them in a second so you can start to see that it's actually shown people how we use it. For the service-based businesses, the examples will be more about how you describe it. Laura Belgrey is an absolutely fantastic service-based example. Um, when she has her copy cure, she talks, and I'll give you some examples on that, she talks about it. But if I'm being honest with you, the service-based businesses are the ones that are lacking the description and lacking the information in terms of how to make an extension of what they offer. I'm just going to stop the share. And the reason that there isn't as many examples of service-based businesses is because they sell the entire thing, okay? So if you are a service-based business, do not sell massive leaps, right? So if I think I go, you need to sell beginning to middle and middle to end, okay? Because if I'm coming for therapies or I'm coming for coaching, or I'm coming to have my entire house redesigned, selling the end is not giving me an example of what it's like to work with you because I can't quite get my head there yet. Does that make sense? Whereas if you say we start off here and initially we look at this, this and this, and then in the middle, common things that come up are this, this, this and this. And then we take you from there to your desired goal. OK. And that's where you'll stand out from the crowd. And that's the examples. But it's very hard because service based businesses have fallen into the trap of before and after. You know, they don't say, here's how I guide you when you like if I was doing it, I would do an example. Here's how I guide you through when you want to give up on your business and you think this is fucking shit. I never want to do this again. I should have warned you. I curse. Um, and, and, and it's over, you know, because that's so much better for somebody to understand actually hang on a second she's worked with people that want to throw in the towel as opposed to me going here's exactly how, what you're going to get at the end so if you're a service-based business one of the one of the ways that we can sell is try to think well what happens at the beginning what happens in the middle you know uh, Lance you spoke last week that people stay with you for quite a wee while so to send to sell an end transformation might not be as possible but to say, you know, here's some of the growth things that happen and here's how we guide you through the difficult things. And Stacey, you mentioned that as well. So I got a bit carried away there with those examples, but I do think it's really important to understand how it works and what, what's actually quite missing. Um, <clears throat> so for your selling, we're always looking at holistic selling, right? And what I want you to consider is like the rule of seven. And that basically states that people need to hear of something seven times for the message to even land. OK, now, for anyone who has kids on this call, how many times do you have to say things to your children <laughs> for them to hear it seven times? The estimate is about like 200 to 250. But we we're not going to be posting 200 times about the one thing. But what I mean is, as far as possible, all of our marketing has to lead to the one road right so we're not going to go to a networking event and promote one thing that's completely different to what we're promoting on social media right and um, we're not going to have in Facebook groups something that's completely different to what we're promoting over on our Instagram you know all roads have to lead to the one thing to give people the best opportunity and it's also a reminder that people learn through repetition so if you think oh my god I'm repeating myself well, we'll look at bringing in and experimenting with different ways of making it fun and exciting. But what we also have to bear in mind is that people need to hear things again, right? If you've ever read a book, you know yourself, you could read the introduction and the conclusion and you've got the gist of the book, you know, because that's what they need to do. Prime you, go into things in greater detail and then sell the book at the end. So for anyone who's ever said, I did a post on that and nobody bought or I did an email on that, or I spoke to people in networking, and no, you're not alone. Promise you, you're not alone. You have to remind that that literally goes against human behavior, 
like people aren't going to understand it like that. So we come back. Okay, sorry. Okay, so here's an example. If we look at Lumi, can you tell I'm going to buy one of these for my birthday? I heard about the 10 weeks and I was like, oh my God. So this is their website. It's very similar to their Instagram. Same imagery, same graphics, but it's the same promotion. I kind of cut it off down here on the left-hand side. You can see that they do have an ethical urgency. They do have get 15% off if I buy now, right? And then if I go to their Facebook, I can see it's very similar to their Instagram. It's people actually in using the product. And then when I go to their paid adverts, if somebody just to know how you can check what businesses are doing for paid adverts, you see that the adverts that they're running after I click on their website and they're retargeting me is the same message, right? So what I want you to take home is you have to commit to clarity, right? You have to commit with being super clear about the message that is that it is that you're sharing and what it is that you want people to do. And that's what we'll come on to a little bit later with the self-awareness and how we're going to look to do that in a way whereby um, how to do it when times are tough and how to do it when you're feeling a little bit, a little bit tired. OK, so moving on to like our sales content, we will get into how to build a launch plan, but I do want to go through the specific sales content. So have a think for, OK, I'm going to come off the share for this right now. I'd love for you to share in the chat, how can you sell right now? Right. So how can you sell to the people that are following you? You know, is it through networking? Is it through Facebook, Instagram? email, your website, what are the different ways that you can sell right now? Or feel free to come off mute. I'm finding um, Instagram seems to be my uh, language of most popular channel of all the channels that I have currently. Um, I also find that videos for me have proven to be quite a hit especially when I do mood boards. Um, I get quite a lot of interaction. I also get quite a lot of reach on the, those numbers organically, which is lovely, <laughs> but I have to pay for it. <laughs> um, so for me at the moment, I've realized that I can't do those every day because um, doing a mood board, I have to get all the samples and then think about the, you know, interior design, I have to think about how does it look and my messaging, what I want to say. But when I do do them, I get quite a strong reaction um, from from them but realizing what you've taught us so far that that speaks to everybody it doesn't speak to maybe my audience that might want to purchase even though everyone likes it so I'm on mute but it's only a slight tweak so rather so so your so your content to the broader audience is this amazing mood board but the content is here's how I create your mood board to build a house of your to build a room of your dreams so it's only a slight tweak and, you, and then you'd walk them through, you know, what is a mood board? What does it mean for you? You know, so I start to ask this information. I pull it together. I give you a visual element of what your space could look like, you know, and what you basically then know is if it goes in your room, you know, and you get really, and then, then I'm not like, okay, I know what a mood board is now. Yeah, true. I hadn't, I thought <laughs> maybe everybody knew what a mood board is. Oh. Maybe good. <laughs> so maybe that's just my my language yeah. Okay. So. yeah so it's again it's only the slight tweak here's a mood board to the broader audience oh it's fun it's engaging it's it's appealing here's how i create your mood board to get the generated results that the, the results that you want mm. yeah okay thanks ruth and um, hashi's saying she'd sell through her own social media media and how she's got Facebook and Instagram. It's amazing for the enable if you're not following, posting in groups on social, newsletters to customers and through her stockists. How's everyone else? Would anyone add anything to that in terms of how they're selling or how they can currently reach the audience? I think for me, it's a lot of talking to people in person. I think it's easy when you work with dogs because you know, you're out with your dog and you bump into people and I've got my branded jacket and then people ask you about, you know, their dog training questions like, oh, I can help you and you pass on your card, that sort of thing. Um, and in terms of the product, I take them with me to training clients and sort of show them and I'm like, oh, you can buy them from me through my website. So I think I do a lot of it just chatting as well. I don't think of it as selling because I think that would stress me out. I think of it as just chatting. 
Yeah. Um, so that's a nice way of doing it, I yeah. think, for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could reframe selling as making it easy for them to buy. Yeah, yeah. You know, like get the product, get the product into their hand. Brought these for you to have a quick feel. Would you like me to order you one? Yeah, and I think maybe that's the bit that's missing a little bit because I sort of chat and I'm like, oh, at the end, I'll send you the link to my website and you can order through that. So maybe I need to be a bit, not pushy, but a wee bit more direct at that stage. Yeah, but but why would you be pushy if you know that the product helps the animal? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I think it's just sometimes I'm shy about telling them about sort of being too direct. Like I'll say, oh, you could buy these if you want to, or maybe I need to be a bit more direct about it and yeah. say this will help. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I've done some research into the products that will help. I've narrowed it down between this and this. Would you like me to order you one? Okay. Yes, I like that. That's a nice. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, plus people, as he said, because people are busy, so they're probably <laughs> <busy right now. laughs> clarity, clarity. People yeah. can't. We did the um, Elspeth and I from Yummy Keys did the Mom and Baby Fair 2019 just before lockdown, and it was like you know people were walking around to their board, and I just I was just handing those Yummy Keys to every baby, <laughs> and like I was letting them have a feel. I was cleaning them in between, and what happened inevitably was we couldn't get them back, and I was like, do you want to take a look at the products? If the kid gives them back to me, I'm not going to ask because the parents aren't interested, you know, but if the kid is enjoying it and it's solving the teething issue and it's doing what it says on the box and the parents want to find out more, but they need that, that, that feeling of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. 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 So look at the people that sell really well face to face. You're like presenting people with a menu in a restaurant. That's your inspiration. So think of like the best restaurant that you've ever been to. And how they spoke to you, how they got a feel for like, you know, here's the specials this week. We've got some special products this month. Here's why we've chosen them. More, more dogs are on the beach. There's more people out and about. And then you can say, and um, you can even bring order forms with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, perfect. How else? Is there anything you'd add? So we're selling through social media, posting in groups, newsletters, customers and stockists, websites. Anything else? I use um, this thing called um, Calendy. Calendy? <laughs> it's like a scheduling tool to arrange video calls. And the way I do the language is you book a slot when it's a date and time that suits you. So I feel like I, I kind of, I feel like with my leads, it kind of helps me put it back onto them that they slot a time when there it's convenient for them. And I find it's um, a really helpful sales tool. Sorry, I didn't get that out very well. <laughs> But, no, perfect. Yeah. Um, but I've been finding that's been kind of helpful with me like if I am getting leads through just trying to get them to book a slot and that's our time just to have a general chat not to be too salesy um, and then after that yeah, I probably fall off a cliff Calendly is amazing for anyone who's, who's new to Calendly they give you one free product that you can do for free so you don't have to sign up for the paid version just yet so you could kind of test it out and you could you know 15 or 30 minutes you know discovery call introductory call and you can set the times in your diary that you want so Ruth I don't know if you have um if they still do the um yeah refer a friend my... you can share oh I'll, I'll yeah I'll get my link for it and I'll yeah. show yeah, everyone pop that link. um sync up to your gmail and if you have things in your calendar, it already automatically um, blocks that out. So customers, you never have to worry about um, um, getting book things booked at the same time. Just keep your own Gmail calendar up to date. So I've just found it really helpful yeah. just to make the customer feel like um, they're special in a way, yeah. I guess. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and if we think back to what we spoke about last week, it's like some people need to take action to feel like they're doing something. So especially if they're reaching out to you for that first time, they want an initial transaction in many cases. So Calendly is the perfect way to have that initial transaction for some businesses, because it means that they kind of go, they get that, oh, well, I've booked that call now, you know, and, and, and I can go there. So that's really good. Thanks, guys. So I want you to think about how you can sell, right? So for people who are saying social media, posting in groups, newsletters, customers and stockists, face to face, via Calendly, all of the ways that you can sell, we want the same message, right? What we don't want to be doing is say, is going to a networking and saying, I'm promoting X. And, and I know in networking, you're meeting somebody and then 
in our email and our social media promoting something completely different, right? It has to be the same thing that we're promoting because what we're trying to do is try to come at it from the outside so that people are like, well, all roads lead to this one thing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense for you, Nancy? It does. Yes, it does. But I am trying to work out how I can do that because I've kind of got two different streams going on. One is um, that I do acupuncture. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I would promote, although that's really good for mental health, it's also really good for pain. I don't ever want to work full time doing pain management with acupuncture. Mm -hmm. But because I'm new, I need to get loads of new people in, yeah. as in new premises. And the office that I work in, and I've got no social media, anything, no audience or anything. I'm just thinking, right, what is the quickest way of letting people know this? So I was thinking, right, in the elevator in this office with loads of people, yeah. I'm just going to put, right, pain relief, you know, acupuncture. But then if they went and Googled me one day when I actually get something out there, my message isn't going to be pain relief. It's going to be therapy, mental health, all of so so that's not yeah I'll plead into the same thing. What would I do in that situation? Um, yeah, that's a really, really good question. And I think it is, I think when you're starting out, it's the the not starting out, but starting something new, because you're not starting out, it's the always the balance between money in the now and money in the future. Yeah. Right. And you know, the bills don't go away, right? So money in the now is always going to be our priority right but then it's about okay I can bring them in with acupuncture but it's up to me to then let them quickly know the rest of the pain management okay, okay? you know so but I would probably recommend that your message to people in the elevator is the new premises as a whole oh okay yeah 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 but so benefits it that's just uh it's it's the money that's going to be a better money in the now for you because then what they could come in is you can say pain management, including acupuncture therapies, and you can list everything that you're doing, right? Because they, they well, we know what it's like working full-time on George Street. It's stressful. There's just shit going on. There's all of these things. So I would create like a specific message, like a poster with a QR code mm -hmm. um, so that they can book via Calendly. Always give them a QR code. God bless. God bless. Um the pandemic for what it's done for QR codes because they're they're everywhere now and people are using them but we could have like a little poster that's like you know like whatever it is that you want to call it the overarching and then you could have three bullet points about what you're doing in there okay thank you so mm -hmm. much yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and I think this is the thing is like as you then start to develop and we're, we're moving more towards money in the future you're like well actually um we're promoting yours you're kind of like the primark beauty example you know so primark beauty are never going to go here's this one lipstick well primark beauty are, are, are promoting is their dupe range right mm -hmm. that's why you're going to primark because it's a dupe of all of the more expensive ones i heard kids in there today going oh that's the that's the bobby brown one or whatever you know and i was like oh my god what's this and um, so yours is kind of like you're promoting the overarching thing and then the the bullet points for what comes underneath that thank you mm -hmm. that makes sense perfect okay so it's about reminding us you know what 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 the content that we're going to create over the course of today okay and what are we selling so so we spoke about this last week our priming content so you know again nancy you'll probably come to this a little bit later but like this priming content you know it could be therapy one therapy two ter therapy three you know the different types of things that you're doing and you start to create content on that for the rest of us that have that we know that are already working on social media and working on sharing we would do what is success number one success number two you know we'd let them know that something's coming soon if there's a wait list we'd say join the wait list that's our primary content but it's that simple okay our sales content once we launch something is going to be ever so slightly different, right? And we'll come to put this into a plan later on, but we'll have like specific sales posts, okay? We'll have, you know, uh, the first thing that people ask is, you know, will this work for me, right? And um, from a product-based thing, it's showing people using it, enjoying it, you know, answering questions like, will this work for me if I have a dog that, um, if I have a dog that, you know, is really badly behaved? Um, will this gift work for me if I have somebody that, you know, like buying for Rachel, 
you know, like the Rachel of Friends things where you cannot get her a gift because she returns everything, you know, like, so the perfect gift for the person who has everything. Like, that's kind of a question that people ask. And um, we want testimonials as related to the success. So I'm going to give you some examples. Um, investment. Now, we don't always have to specifically say this is amazing value. Like, you know, like if you're selling a product, we talk about the quality. We talk about it being long lasting. If we're selling a service, we talk about how people feel afterwards. We talk about the problems in the beginning. We, we say things like, you know, imagine how it would feel to be more comfortable in your own shoes, to have an opportunity to connect with your children, to have fun, to enjoy it, to chat with other parents. You know, you start to talk about like what they're getting from it, as opposed to just going, this is the price. It's good value. Goodbye. You know? And that, by the way, can I just say, and it, it really drives me absolutely insane. Lots of small businesses do that. They don't talk about the value. They don't talk about the quality. They don't talk about the experience. And then they put a random post going, you need to support small businesses. And like, that's enough to just drive consumers insane right now. They're just going to go, hell no, hell no. Our job is to use everything that we, like there's, and I'm not saying there's not restrictions, I'm not saying there's not fundamental flaws in, in the market right now. I'm not saying that there's not problems. But what I'm saying is it's our job to be really clear about what we offer before we go to, oh, nobody's supporting small businesses anymore, because that's simply not true. And um, the time involved, you know, does it take time for these products to work? Does it take time for them to be delivered? Does it take, you know, and from the perspective of the, the service based business, you know, how long do we start seeing results? You know, how long does the process of um, redesigning my room and the interior design take? Like we start to talk about all these things and our sales content would also include our last chance. You know, here's our last chance to buy this. Right. So and again, we're doing this speaking to the people who are ready to buy now. OK, we're not doing this speaking to people who are not ready to buy because there's just absolutely no point in doing that. I would say for a business like yours, Nancy, you could assume that people are ready to buy now because we know these therapies are popular. They're, they're low. You know, I'm not going to go for a meal going, I need to prime people for too long. We can assume that people are hungry, you know, but and we can assume that people need help in certain areas. So just go and speak to them, you know, just go and say, you know, if you've got pain, here's why acupuncture helps you know, and we start to do these sorts of things. Um, I want to give examples of another way of selling is in your bio, right? A clear call to action. So most of our bios talks about our business as a whole. And this is the camp wildfire that Catherine, I'd love for you to take a look at. I'd love for everyone to take a look at them because they're absolutely unreal. Um, but what we're doing with this is we're saying what's on offer. Final tickets now on sale. Right. It's just it's just for adults, summer camp for adults, but they're not missing out. If you've got kids, they're redirecting us. Mm -hmm. um, I want to give examples of some posts and some content. So a product based one, one that's a sales post that's including the price and the details and um, everything on the Be Perfect page is like is videos. It's reels. It's showing people using things. It's bringing the product to life. So for product-based businesses, we want to bring it to life. For service-based businesses, we want to see your face and previous customers bringing it to life. You know, so the easiest thing we can do when we're starting out in social media is to start talking directly to the camera if possible. So Chroma Cover Luminous Foundation available now. It's weightless, hyaluronic acid, vitamin E. It's got all of the benefits in there and it's got the price available in 36 shades. Now, Another post that you'll see that they'll do is they'll do the swatching of the 36 shades on the arm, you know? So they don't just say available in 36 shades and leave it at that. They will clearly demonstrate the 36 shades on someone's arm as well. So everything that they're doing is letting you feel what it's like to have that product on your arm and to know it. Mm -hmm. And again, I've left the question in there, would this work for oily skin? Because if I started to get common questions, I would do a post or I would get an influencer or I would do a blog going, here's how the Chroma Cover Luminous works on oily skin. Like use everything your customers ask you as market research and feedback that you can use. Um, a testimonial for a service-based business. So testimonials are part of your sales content. I only finished module one, but I rewrote my web copy on the same day 
and landed three more ideal clients within 24 hours, right? So this is for copy cure. It's like a copy one. It's very American. But what I like about it is, is they're very clear in the transformations that they offer. So if you're looking for coffee help for your website or anything, getting ideal clients is one of the successes and getting them quickly is another success. So if you're asking for testimonials, we don't want one saying, oh, this person is amazing. They did this, this, this and this. So if you're asking for testimonials, we would say things like, um, how did your life benefit as a result of this? You know, if we're selling products, we would say, you know, um, would you recommend us to a friend? And if so, why? You know, what was the best thing about getting the bespoke gift? What was the best thing about buying such a high quality product? You know, so when we're asking for testimonials, we don't want an echo chamber talking about how amazing we are lovely and all as that is for our egos like it's absolutely amazing and I send them to my mom I won't lie I take screenshots and send them to my mom but in terms of helping people get an extension of what it's like to work for me we want to ask for people to provide a little bit more information um another one for this was I was about to drop because that's a language that everyone uses 700 on a copywriter but I signed up and so far I've made this. So it's showing the transformation in the testimonial. It's saying I was about to spend money on a copywriter. So you've saved me money and I've earned money now. And I do think that 700 is strategically placed there because copy cure will be less than 700, you know, so it's, they know what they're doing, you know, and with the Canadian dollar being so weak. So that's thank you, Brexit. That'll work really well for the pound as well. Um, some product posts for anyone selling a product based business small is a really really good example of taking a fucking boring product and making it sound really really interesting but here want to ditch plastic from your laundry and dishwashing and then they're selling the bundle okay how we could do that for um for a therapy based business Lancy is we could you know um, want to de-stress and have you know the perfect experience you know here's a list of our therapies and how they can help you know not sure which therapy is for you drop me a dm and we can walk you through what's going to work best mm -hmm. looking for stress relief or pain management here's what you can do for Catherine for your class-based businesses we could do something a bit higher level like you know want to have amazing um, want to have amazing experiences with your child you know whatever it is that you want to say and then we could do here's our classes you know here's what you can choose from so these examples it would be very easy for me to give examples specific to your industry but if I give examples specific to your industry you're going to become part of the noise if you can look at marketing from all of these different industries and get ideas you're not going to become part of the noise Right. So it would be so cool for me to come in with loads of dog products, with loads of bespoke gifts, with loads of coaches, loads of therapies, loads of service based businesses. But you're not going to get ideas. So look at a variation and start to see how they're doing it, because that's how you're going to stand out from the crowd. And um, this lady I love, she's from Glasgow and she's pregnant. I don't know if you know her, but if you notice, she's like, do your Insta sales, sales strategy suck? You know, do you find your rooms a little bit gray and you're bored of it? You know, do you find you're constantly in pain sitting at your desk all day? Um, you know, do you find you're bored of certain classes? You know, you ask a question that is rhetor rhetorical, you know the answer to it. And then you say things that you know that they're already doing. You know, if you're constantly buying new things for your house, but they don't quite fit, so then you give them away. You know, if you're wasting money, if you're constantly buying magazines and saying that you're going to do this, but you're not quite sure, um, name things. And then, then you say, luckily for you, that's where I come in. You know, so these are just examples for you to get inspiration from. I'm not saying that you have to do this, but I would caution you. And I'll repeat this till, you know, my mouth stops talking, which will never happen. But it's like, go to different industries and see how they're doing it and try and think, because that's inspiration. Going to just your own industries, that's, you know, you're merging in and it's boring and it's not going to look very different. And um, this one I love as a sales post because I think it's just brilliant it's for that wildfire campaign so they had to create a different ticket so they've got the graphics there with everything that's included in the ticket right everything that's included in the ticket so you know like if you were to do a discounted sale for a product-based business you could have a photo of all of the products on there and you could have like 
50% off everything across the site you know if you were like doing like like if you had like services like there's so many ways that you could do this in your industry and what they've said is for 225 or just 75 pound per month using our industry payment plan we've taken away notice how they've mentioned the cost up the front right they're not putting the cost down the bottom as something that you leave with it's like this is what it costs and they tell you everything that the basic ticket includes and they've shown you everything that the basic ticket includes you know, and this isn't a standalone promotion. This is a promotion that goes alongside the rest of their promotion as well. Okay, I love that. The only thing I wouldn't do is call it a basic ticket. Um, and I love this one for like coffee. For anyone like me who likes coffee, I need to be in Starbucks. I need to be sitting down. It's a service. Coffee for me is not a product. It will never be a product. And what they've done here is they've covered that. Can surplus coffee be sustainable and sexy at the same time? And they've made the branding look amazing. They've made it look incredible and they've had it sexy as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want you to pick something that you're going to sell, right? So Nancy, it's going to be your overall, it's going to be your new premises, okay? Um, pick something that you're selling and I just want you to give me some bullet points about what's going to go into the sales post for that because we need a specific sales post, right? And I'm going to give you enough time that I can put on the kettle so if anyone wants to get a tea go and get a cup of tea now but I want you to think about what you're selling because the clarity is key we need to have the sales post that we can turn into a sales email and we're going to take that sales post and turn it into a group post we want to have a crystal clear sales post so give me some bullet points about what's going to go in there that like that hook it doesn't have to be that rhetorical question at the top is there any information that you need to go in there do you want you're going to if you're going to put the price you want to put the price in there, what the, the transformations are. You know, we already know, we've discussed it last week, what does success look like? We bring that back in to what success looks like. And we're going to get some sales posts created today. So I'm going to give us till maybe till 25 to. We're going to take enough time to do this, okay? And if you need more time, just pop in the chat that you need that. Yeah, it does look fun, Rick, the adults only camping, doesn't it? Did you go? No, but now I remember seeing it on that TV programme and I remember looking at it going, that looks really cool because I, I think there was a lot of booze involved. But <laughs> Oh my God, oh my God. I was like, as you know, finding myself single at 40, I was like, that might be the only place I'd meet, you know, like, <laughs> like, like a worthy suitor. Um, well, better than internet dating, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, definitely, definitely. Right, come, we'll come back in about like seven, eight minutes. So if anyone needs a bathroom break, crack on and we'll go from there.
and I'm here by the way I'll turn back on my camera if anyone's got any questions that I can help with oh sorry Nicola you've asked and some help with the task to 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 write out a sales post maybe even if you don't write it out just some bullet points of what you put into your sales post and how you promote what you want to sell right now If you need more time, just let us know. If not, we can crack on. What's it doing? Who, who's brave enough to share? I think you know we're quite friendly by now. Yeah, you crack on, Ruth. I'll just share it in the chat. Hold on. Two oh, you've written it. Brilliant. Yeah, so I used to work in marketing. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Remember you say that at networking. <laughs> Um, hold on, tell me if it's good or not. Um, well, sorry, we want you trust in your gut. Yeah, it's not copied it. For... <laughs> I did have spaces between all of <laughs> I love it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If a couple of questions that are coming up. Sure. 
hit me. Um, what happens when you don't have the dream in your head? Does everyone know what they want when they come to you? Because if I came to you, I wouldn't have a fucking clue. Um, my last, my current client, she kind of did. She was very specific, yeah. but when it came to style, she was like, I don't know. Yeah. And I don't, I don't mind that because sometimes, which I have in her case, I took inspiration from her wedding bouquets that she dried and I thought that was lovely it gave a vintagey feel so that gave me a little insight into maybe her style without her having to feel like oh my god do I have to divulge everything because it's part of the process sometimes I will eke it out of you <laughs> so. Okay, so, so I need you to tell me that oh okay good <laughs> I need you to tell because I, I'm noticing you're not Nicola G I'm, I'm not the only one that would be like Oh my god you'd have to be i wouldn't have a clue and that's why i would want somebody to help me with that product because i wouldn't even know where to start <laughs> so when you target me yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and ha ha she's saying in the comments i wish i had the home of my dreams that have no idea where to start so i think that like people the it's what 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 means ready to buy from you so ready mm -hmm. to buy is that they're ready to invest it doesn't necessarily mean that they have an idea that you're coming with or does it um. yeah Hmm. Yeah. that's an interesting one I don't know <laughs> the answer to that um, I think they might have a dilemma like the client that I won recently um, she was so pregnant she just didn't have the headspace to do it but I knew that she was desperate the feeling of nesting and the feeling of um, I just want my space to be the way I want it and that was why she hired me so quickly I think as well mm -hmm. so so that could be your prime in content. Yes. That success is to have the space that I want it. But the uh -huh. barrier that you're a bridge over is A, I don't have the time or B, I don't know how. Yeah. yeah. So if we could cover that in the prime in and we could turn around and say, you know, how do I eke out a style if you don't think you have one? Mm -hmm. And nobody's saying that everyone's create your dream space. And I'm like, sometimes my dream space would be in a different country. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> yeah so I, like, I would be moving home with Ulton and a backpack you know just living yeah. on the beach so it's, it's, it's like when people say that so it's like it's it, that's overused it's like you know like it's like you have a style inside you and here are so you, here are three to four different ways that I that I work with you to get that out of your head what's yeah, like, I, I will get out of you without you realizing yeah so. yeah 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 you know you know how how is this space utilized like all of the stuff that like we know but we don't know or that you we're assuming that we know but we've not been clear about it yes yeah it, that doesn't matter to me because it's a bit of a journey when I'm with somebody and that's for me I really enjoy that like I'm learning about them and what makes them tick because that's because at the end of the day they have a space that they love yeah. it's not really about my style or what I like you know mm -hmm. um it's got to be something that they really go Godris, you did it for me. I didn't think I could get the space and I wouldn't have imagined you could, you know, you created this space for me. You, like you're my spare part now. <laughs> I'm coming back. <laughs> so, um, so I need to see that in your social media. Yes, I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So, 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 and, and again, again, I, I think if you're ever doubting this, it's ask yourself the question, how much will I stand out from other people if I stop telling and start showing? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's that's like, the here's me at the oh. moment, you know, that's the bit that's stopping me at the moment. Yeah. It's showing my personality on yeah. social media. But I always know when people see me on calls, they like, well, hopefully <laughs> they like what they see. And that's what they, I know. I understand that's what people buy. Yeah. But yeah. I think that, I don't know, I have barriers <laughs> as we've been talking uh -huh. about. Uh, yeah. And, and it's, it's not to say those barriers are going to come down immediately because like it's, it's, it's about time, but it's like, it's the face to face, you know, people trust to face more. Like we know that mm -hmm. and you know that for working in marketing, but it's like, it's how can I, how can I show my face? And if I don't feel comfortable doing the live face to face talking to the camera, nowadays we can do reels and overlay it with text. Yes. You know, yeah. nowadays we can do voiceovers and do voice over the entire process. So what does that look like? Yeah, I have been thinking about that. Yeah, that's true. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and what I would be getting in there is the two mood boards, design style. So you could then take that post and do here's how I create a mood board. Could be one of your sales posts, you know, and what's included in a design plan, you know, because and then. And then what's included in the shopping list? Do I create the shopping list? How is the shopping list presented? Like all of these things. Mm -hmm. 
yeah and then and then then we can do like the like what does the time back with the family you know like is then showing people sitting down using the, like the ikea adverts that do that really well and showing, showing how people do that mm -hmm. yeah i'm trying to think if i was looking for in for me in inspiration for your industry without copying anyone i would look at stylists in different countries you know, and I would start to look at like personal stylists, the ones that are that are share your values and share your ethos. And I would maybe look at um, I'm trying to think like makeup artists. They're very similar. And then I would choose completely different industries that are also service based, you know. Mm -hmm. OK, who is so thank you for that. And um, who would like I'd love to see a product based as well. But anyone who wants to share, share. Oh, yeah, come on. Yeah, I'm keen to get some tips. <laughs> So I'm in the process of um, making up a subscription box of natural dog treats. Um, so I was trying to think of how to stand out. One of the things that's going to do that, I think, is I'm a dog trainer. So people are know that it's going to be good. It's going to help with training. And then I'm also going to include like a monthly trick in each box and then with a hashtag and people can video their dogs. Up looking at. So in terms of selling that, I was thinking, let me make you think, but I was thinking I could maybe do some sort of video of me actually putting one of the boxes together and maybe my dog could be watching and then I don't know how to do this. Maybe someone's got some tips, but I could maybe do it like his voice. Like, oh, what are you putting in there? Oh, is that for me? And it's like, no, it's the time dog. You know, that sort of thing. What, what do you think? And um, who's got dogs that would give feedback on that? Mm hmm. Nicholas, want to share? I asked. I'm so I, sorry, Rosalind. Rosalind, I'm so sorry. I missed that. I got completely distracted by something on my phone. Can you say that again? <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm thinking of doing like a monthly subscription box for dogs. Mm -hmm. And I'm a professional dog trainer, so that's mm -hmm. sort of my USP. Is that all the treats that would be included are obviously things that I use daily with dogs. Um, that I'm training on my own dog. And then in terms of marketing, I was thinking of making a video of me making up one of the boxes and my video watching me, no, my dog watching me and maybe like, I don't know how to do this, but overlaying my dog's voice somehow. So he's like <laughs> describing what's going in the box, like, oh, a beef tail, is that for me? Oh, what's that? A fish cube? Oh, I love those, you know? That sounds something. amazing. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, can I can I just say, I've um, I've got a dog. But my dog's got a voice already. So I <laughs> that's amazing. I, I know a lot of people, so I just think um, it might be like, that's not, I don't know, I feel like that's not what that dog would talk like. But I was thinking you could do the same thing, but just with the text over rather than you doing the voice. Uh, okay. just, yeah, yeah. A, like a balloon bubble or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I love the dog, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. People have got specific ideas about, well, I suppose it's your dog, so it's, You've got his voice. I don't know. That was that was just my thought. That I was like, maybe it's. I I I don't know. If, I don't know. I was just a bit worried that it might not be the right voice for the dog. <laughs> it's not his voice. <laughs> well, I don't even know how to add a different voice onto the the reel yet. I would need to look into that. So if you're yeah, so if you're gonna do a reel, you'll just go to like after you upload the text, and you'll go to like mm -hmm. voiceover, mm -hmm. and you can do a voiceover. And then I don't know how to stop and change the voiceover, but you do the voiceover for you and then the voiceover for the dog as well. Or you mm -hmm. could do always do your voice and then have the text over in the dog. Okay. That yeah, makes sense I think, you do that. Yeah, because I kind of got some inspiration from this other Instagram where it's yeah. just these cute dogs doing their own thing and they have their own little voices and they're not selling anything. They're just being cute. But I was like, what could we be like? Oh, yeah. apply that to my dog yeah. to sell yeah, yeah. And, and again thinking about people learning through repetition we would not just rely on one reel we would do a series of reels so you could okay. break down yeah. the different transformations of that and you could do you could do all of the different things there and um, so so, so so subscription boxes there's lots of different ways to do it I would recommend getting some books off Amazon as a starting place for subscription boxes okay, and they've got yeah. like the different pricing models and the different things because really what you're looking at with subscription model is not making profit on the first x number of boxes and at mm -hmm. what stage then so it does it does look down to where you position yourself in the market you know so okay. you might look at more doing like a quarterly box and um, 
and Mm -hmm. you could look at the vegan kind they're a business in Glasgow they're really good so they do like a 12 pound vegan box so you get 10 pound plus the two pound postage but everything's to the value of 12 pounds but they also do like an a quarterly makeup box with his vegan products and you again that's that's not niche niche lots of products are vegan products but the way that she does it makes it feel a lot more niche and you trust her because you've been buying your other products so there's loads of different ways you can get inspiration there but looking at when you want to make money okay Mm -hmm. and if I was doing that I would look at what kind of influencers do you know that have dogs and if you mm-hmm. want to start local, look at who's popular in Edinburgh with dogs that are like that are well liked and well known. And then you could probably say, well, actually, you would do some sort of a collaboration with them to promote it as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So that's very ways. Thank mm-hmm. you. Yeah. Um, but definitely having that sales post in the sales reel as well. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We've time for one more if anyone else would like to, or who else would like to share? Oh, wait. Talk to okay. us. Are you okay if I speak or I don't want to of course. take up too much time? Um, I'm really sorry I got distracted by my phone, but actually somebody just gave me a review and I just really screamed with delight and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and it just came completely and utterly out of the blue. So that has made my week, let me tell you. Um, I don't even know where to start, right? Um, I have four products that I'm going to be selling, but they're all services. So I've picked two and I'll just share one of them just now because I don't know if I'm on the right um, track. Um, so what I'm going to be off, right, I'll just say what I've written, okay? Are you a counsellor looking to set up your own counselling service? Are you overwhelmed with everything you need to do? I have a training course that holds everything you need to know in one easy place to get you up and running and secure that first client or your first client. That's, that's the main product that I'm selling and I'm selling... Well, it's a service because it's going to be a, tra- a training course and then there's going to be three other kind of services around the training course are the three other services like upsells or are they different variations of it so the other one and this actually became organic this wasn't even on my radar but people started asking me questions and so this the service actually landed in my knee so it's counselors are already qualified and who are not getting clients um, and so the other service that i'm going to offer is are you in private practice and struggling to get clients I offer a service where I can check to see if there's any gaps in your marketing yeah. and so that service landed on my knee and I've actually helped about six people do that and not charge them so now I'm charging them it's on my website <laughs> right if you want yeah. me to check your marketing you need to pay me for that of course um, so mm-hmm. what's stopping counsellors having the right amount of clients their marketing their marketing yeah yeah so because think- there's no shortage of clients there's yeah. the, we're in the biggest mental health pandemic yeah crisis so there's no shortage of clients so so the, the, what I do is if I can't find you how can you and I'm looking for you I don't know who you are yeah. how are your clients yeah. going to find you yeah. right so yeah. I can kind of work around all that yeah um I would I would I, I like what you're saying it sounds brilliant yeah. and I and I would probably add in I mean, I could be wrong, but people who get into counselling strike me as really warm and empathetic and just decent people. You know, it's kind of like, you know, you got into counselling to make a difference. But in order to do that, you have to learn how to market yourself effectively and promote your business to a wider audience. And that's what I want to help you do. So like so like cover over that they're not just counselors they're running counseling businesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like a lot of people don't see that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, Um, And that's the main one. So I think the one that I want to work on tonight, I think we're yeah. going to take this as a thread through tonight. I'll, t- I'll do the training. I'll yeah. talk about the training course. Mm-hmm. And it's, it, is, is, is that a sales and marketing and business training course for the counsellors? No, it, so this it's is... training on what you all need to do to set up your counselling business. Okay, perfect. So all perfect. the policies that you need to create. Um, yeah. Yeah, loads. there's loads in there that you need to do to set up a counselling business. Okay. All the places that you need to be registered with, um, all the insurances that you need to have, like there's mm-hmm. masses to do. Yeah. It pains me to say this, like it really does, but I would be looking at the life coaching industry for inspiration because they are not without people that want to start life coaching businesses because the sales and the marketing of that element is leapfrogging the lack thereof of sales and marketing for counsellors and therapists. So what it basically means is people are going towards that industry that would maybe be best suited for counseling does that make sense like clients everyone knows a life coach but not everyone will know a therapist 
Yeah. Does that make sense? Or a counselor? Yeah, yeah, so it's, totally. it's like I, I would be getting that point across and I would be looking at because Stacey knows that there's some amazing life coaching out there that has some absolutely fantastic marketing that you can learn from to kind of we don't want to be similar to it. But that is unfortunately what you're competing with in a lot of cases. Yeah. Can I just say a tiny little bit more? So what I did earlier this year was kind of like getting my name out there because uh, people know me as a counsellor, but they don't know me in this line of business. And so I contacted the universities to see if I could um, speak to their students who are just about to qualify. So I did a workshop to them. So I had audiences there. And then I did a big online event where 228 people paid to come and listen to my workshop. And then um, somebody has just um, given me a review from that workshop and said, you've given me the confidence to get started. So it's kind of like getting my name out there, but I've not done anything specific on social media now, which is where I feel like I need to yeah. focus my yeah. market, my own marketing. <laughs> So and I need to get the message right so that I get clients. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you had kind of what I'm selling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's always harder to do it for yourself. Like there's a different eye on your and business. This is different. So, yeah. This is different. I know how you sell our counseling service, yeah. but I don't know how you sell this. Mm. And right. can I ask you a quick question? Over 200 people on a call. Fucking brilliant. Number one. Paid, paid for a ticket. Paid. Um, was it what, what, what? When they paid, did you organize the event? So, no, I didn't. Somebody okay. else hosted it and I was yep. the only facilitator. So they hosted it. So they paid the host as well and the money got okay. split between two of us. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I would be doing and that. And it was their marketing. It was their marketing. It wasn't their my marketing. Yeah. No, no, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, but yeah. I would be doing that as a lead generator for you. So you're happy for them to keep 100% of the money yeah, yeah. And, you're, and you're doing that to sell this program. Okay. So I would even go back to them and say mm -hmm. I want to do another course with you and have the training program ready to sell I don't that know that they'd let me do that because that's their business is that what they do okay yeah anyway I'm happy yeah, to no, push no, myself okay. on social media yeah. like yeah. and uh, yeah. that's that's my aim like I'm yeah. on Instagram Facebook and I'm happy to do that so that's kind of where I'm here why yeah. I'm here yeah and so yeah. if we're going to use a theme tonight I'll use the training package train it cool yeah uh-huh okay. Mm -hmm. and always think because always think of those ideas guys if we can one to one and one to many if we can sell one to many where possible we'll look at doing that as well but having that upsell um but that's amazing congratulations that's incredible yeah and then i've hit a slump and i feel like i want to quit and run away and i can't do it anymore and nobody's going to buy it anyway so that's where i'm today so oh, but then yeah. that review's just lifted my spirits <laughs> um, yeah. can i ask on average is it like once a week once a month how often people are feeling like i i'd say i'm once a month where i'm like fuck it i'm taking on i'm <laughs> okay. moving home and, and I'll, I'll, I'll go and it's just normal okay uh, oh yeah so normal <laughs> so normal hmm. it feels like i might never get my mojo back but i'm sure i will Mm -hmm. and and then and and crucially how can I take action if I don't get my mojo back that's probably more important than how can I get my mojo back because it's like we like we went to work not feeling amazing. and I know it's we don't want to do anything that's detrimental to our mental health but we, we need to find ways of promoting that feel safe when we're super busy or when the stuff's going on you know and that's where the potency, if you're speaking to the people who are ready to buy, that'll make that easier. Okay, so come back here. Oh, I am going to keep an eye on the time because, well, we know me by now. Um, okay. Okay, so I did want to include a little bit, a bit about following up without feeling like an absolute dick. Um, and, you know, ethical urgency gives you a deadline to promote. It's easy to follow up if you've cultivated ethical urgency. So it's easy for us to say, oh, my God, I don't want you to miss the deadline. I don't want you to miss the early bird. I don't want you to miss the bonus. You know, um, I don't the, the event is next week. I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to miss the product on offer, you know, but for push periods, you know, for the people who are selling things all year round that doesn't really change. And I know that was quite a few of us. We want to get comfortable sending things like voice notes. We want to get comfortable following up right it's just it's absolutely absolutely key and the reason being is because on average only two percent of sales are made during the first point of contact right and this is why we're looking at the holistic selling tonight but this is why for everyone who's clicked on that loomy website they are going to stalk you around the internet and you're going to see 101 adverts now for um ice baths because they don't follow up you know, you're missing out on potentially 98% of your sales by not following up. Now, following up can be voice notes, emails, 
you know, just gentle reminders to people that, you know, the deadline's coming up. Like it, it doesn't have to be this hard sell, but following up can also be um, being consistent in your social media marketing, you know, taking sales seriously and being like, right, for the period that I'm selling, I am actively going to sell through my testimonials, through my case studies, through my product description posts, through all of these things. So what we're not going to do is go, oh, I did a sales post and then I vanished, right? We're going to test and we're going to measure and we're going to look at everything. Um, and how you follow up is really dependent on what you're selling and how you do it. You know, people expect follow ups by email. You know, if you've got an email newsletter, they'll expect a close in today, last minute. You know, if you're following up on you know, social media, like I know of people who, you know, just connect with someone on <laughs> anyone who's ever done network marketing, guilty as charged. But, you know, like you're trained to connect with somebody and then send them an if I were you message straight away. You know, I went to a wedding once and I saw the girl that I'd sent a sales message to like six months previous, this is about 10 years ago. And I said, oh my God, she's never going to talk to me again. She just laughed. But, you know, it's like we, we, there has to be a sense of, um, fairness when we're followed up if you've never voice noted somebody before if you've never asked for dms it might not feel right but if you've been engaging with people in your messengers in your dms then sending them a voice note to follow up mm -hmm. um, and always have a reason so i would look at getting stuff into your um into your arsenal for following up so it could be oh my god we're about to launch a special offer i didn't want you to miss out here is it it could be you know i'm running if i follow up it's usually to tell people about a networking event that i'm running because then it's not me going oh my god please buy from me but you're going to get to see my face and hopefully you'll like me you know but equally if you don't there's no pressure so it's it's have different things you know there could be a latest industry news that you follow up with but in an ideal world it would be a structured follow-up to have the sale but if you're following up from, let's say, a one to one client that you've spoken to, if you're following up with a stockist that you've spoken to, you might look at having something that you can add value on a new product that you're releasing, that sort of thing. And um, some ways to follow up emails and calls, you know, like space them out. Right. So a follow up for an email would be simple, like it would be a last chance. OK, voice notes, idea via social media and as part of a conversation. So if we say things like in our social marketing, you know, DM, if you've got any questions, then we can follow them up with that DM. You could record a video message. It's very popular with car salesmen now where they'll record a video message. Um, but we could add some value to encourage that reciprocity. Um, if I was meeting somebody in the lift, Nancy, I would be like, you know, I'll just take your name and then I might connect with them on LinkedIn. And I might send them a message over there, you know, or you might message with the CEO. So you'll start to think about ways of following up that is right in terms of how your business gets in front of your customers, you know, and we're all different. Um, following up as a sales tip has become increasingly popular nowadays, you know. Ooh. So like follow up immediately after a purchase with a discount for the next. Anyone who read who ran the Edinburgh Marathon knows that you get an email straight away with 50 percent off your registration for next year. That's very deliberate. You know, they get those early numbers. A year is a long time in the life of anyone, you know, especially a runner. But if you're on a high after doing the marathon, they, it, that's a follow up, you know. Um, lots of people upsell in a follow up. So if you purchase something, they might say, oh, you've purchased this. You might also be interested in this. It's great for products as part of your empty cart series. It's become increasingly popular to downsell as part of a follow up. Right. So more long term, Nicola, when you're looking at the training is that like lots of people when they're downselling, they might go, here's our training course. You know, we're releasing it. It's amazing. You know, it's six weeks. It's a group coaching program. It's all singing, all dancing. And as your list starts to grow, you know, a certain percentage will sign up for that. But you might downsell a self-study course to the people who didn't sign up. Yeah. So you might say something like, you know, our group program wasn't for you. Here is um, here is a self-study course that might be and you give them a tie bound offer, you know. So there's loads of examples for this. I want you to kind of keep these for the future. But following up is a key for your business. And your job is to identify what does following up look like for you. Catherine, if you've got like WhatsApp groups for previous clients, you know, I know you've got your wait list out there. You would follow up with them and make sure they get booked on by saying, you know, we're just about to open it up to the wider audience. We're already getting inquiries. If you're interested in booking, crack on now. Um, and our aim as a business through all sales is to create regular customers. 
Okay, so that this is essentially what we want. We want customers who are loyal to us, who know, like, and trust us. And over, over time, we can expand our services. But typically, it takes about three to five purchases for customers to become regulars. Okay, so if you think they have to discover us, we have to add value, <laughs> then we have to, you know, speak to them directly when they're ready to sell. And then we have to encourage them to buy. This is the hard work involved in building a sustainable small business. It's not for everyone. That's why not everyone's doing it. But our, our long term aim, if we want predictable sales, is regular customers. Right. So there is a journey and that's where the money in the now and the money in the present comes in. You might still be testing out what your first sales are. And that's that's OK. OK, so when we're communicating, so we've got an idea of our sales post. OK, so our communication always has to balance between how I like to sell in terms of uh, it's my business. How do you like to sell? Right. Versus how your customer processes information. OK, so what that basically means is some people might need lots of information in order to buy. But you might be the type of person that has shitloads of energy and gets really excited about something and goes, oh, my God, this is amazing. Right. So you're not speaking to each other there. Right. So this is about getting the balance between how do I appeal to the different learning styles? Right. So there's always going to be people who like to see things, who are visual, who like videos. There's always going to be people who like to read things. You know, there's always going to be people who like to listen, you know, all of our podcasts, anyone who likes listening to voice notes. Right. So. Your job as a business owner is to, to, to experiment so that you can strike that balance. Right. And what that basically means is if you want to appeal to all audiences, and I mean all of the people who are ready to buy, you could take the same sales post and you could have like an information sales post, you know, kind of like the examples that we gave where we had like just the written content with the bullet points. Here's what's on offer. Then you might decide, OK, some people like to see faces. You might also record a live video that says, guys, I really want to talk you through this amazing new product that we've got. So I'm going to do a live unboxing with you here today. OK, excuse my shooting handle. And um, you might you might do a, a visual one whereby you share infographics with, you know, how I help you create a mood board. You know, so for the people who like to see a little bit more and the listening one's a little bit harder to do because it kind of combines with the face to face. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, again, this is about striking a balance, but it's like, you know yourself, you'll have certain friends that never respond to a text message. <laughs> you'll have certain friends that never watch a live video, you know, and the, the annoying thing is our job as business owners is to speak to all of them. However, from a content perspective, we can share the same content in all of the different ways. Does that make sense? So I want you to take the sales post that you've already written and you've already got bullet points and just think, we've got an information post. How could I do that to people who uh, value face-to-face -face communication? Okay, I'm gonna stop it, stop the share. Um, how could I do that to people who value something that's more visual? OK, before and after photos of somebody who's lost loads of weight is a really good example. It's a side by side before and after. Right. Visuals of your classes like you could do a video of you setting up your classes, Catherine, and the fun that's happening, kind of like what Wildhood are doing, you know. So think take that post and think, how could I appeal to the people who want the written information, the people who want something that's visual and the people that want to see more of my face and hear me talk and get to know me as a person. And it can be the same content in all three, but we're just going to take the same message and communicate it in different ways. Any questions? All the, um, I don't know if, you, if I just missed you saying this, if you were doing all the same content, but in all different ways, would you post them 
at the same time or would you stagger it they would be they would be separately yeah, yeah. separately yeah yeah because and then it, it it forms as a repetition for the other person as well yeah yeah mm -hmm. so an example on the Lumi one how they did that really well was they're showing loads of videos of people getting into the ice bath you know but then they're also showing a photo of the ice bath with a little photo saying the different the different benefits of it and they're showing live videos of people talking about using the ice bath you know <clears throat> so from a services perspective you could show you know what you could do like a tale of two a tale of two businesses you know somebody that gets market and support when starting their council and business and somebody that doesn't you know and you could say what's possible for them and then you could do a live video of here's how i support mark here's how i support council and businesses to thrive you know so you can do it in different ways from a therapies perspective you can just have images of here's the therapies that we offer you know with bullet points underneath absolutely perfect and then you could do a video if you wanted again you don't have to do these it's just we want to appeal to how people learn so you choose what works for you but we could do a live video on you know i just want to talk you through our our new premises here's a guided tour over here's where we're going to do the acupuncture here's where we're going to do our other therapies and um, we look forward to seeing you and i'll pop the link below on how you can book you know, so we can start doing, you could even do a video to record to send to the other people in the offices. You might not know this. Here's some photos. Here's what's on offer. Mm -hmm. But you choose what you're sharing. Again, it's the balance. How do I best communicate? What lights me up? What makes sense for me? And how do people receive that information? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Hattie's saying... For me, homeware and gifts, I need more lifestyle photos versus purely product photos to see how the items can look in a room. Yeah. For face to face doing lives, talking about the products or reels and talking about them showing the products, absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. But you can also see how then your feed becomes more vibrant and you stand out more from the crowd because you're not just saying, hey, I'm amazing. <laughs> Come by for me. And then here's what we do. You're, you're sharing the message in different ways. anybody got any questions about this before i move on no all right go on let me know if you do okay okay Sorry. so people learn through repetition and it's about being really clear about that is that like you're not repeating for the sake of i want to bore people the only person you're going to bore in the first instance is yourself Right. Like, and, and I mean that with the deepest respect as you put God, I'm mentioning this again, but you'll still have people turn around and go, oh, you run an event. I saw something about it. Or let me know about your next events because I didn't see it. You know, you, you, you're the only person that's reading every post that you share. You're the only person that's looking at every different thing. Other people are, are not paying as much attention. So know that you would have to have friends sending you messages going you are boring me to tears for you actually to be boring your audience you know and that's not to say stale content doesn't exist but what i mean is people aren't taking as much notice as we think that they are okay so that's a brief run through of the content this is where we move into how we set your goals we are going to go a little bit over half past so i'm sorry if anyone needs to switch off we will have the recording um I got a bit carried away with the timings. But for your goal setting, what I want you to ask is who here sets sales goals? Who here has it? This is my target. Okay, that's okay. Um, I do want you to set goals, but I want you to set goals in a way that feels right for you. Okay, so you might have an income goal. You might have an effort goal or you might have a learning goal right? Especially when it comes to sales. So your income goal could be, okay, I want a minimum of X amount of sales, right? Give yourself something to aim for. Your effort goal is probably going to be more about who would I become as a business owner if I followed through on the sales plan, okay? Because chances are following through is going to make such more of a difference. Or you might have a learning goal. You might be, okay, there's a little bit of a gap here in terms of what I need to learn. OK, so sales targets. So if we have a sales target, we need to know about what what's the number of items that we need to sell. OK, and what usually happens when we start to sell 
is we go through the emotional cycle of change. And you can tell me if this sounds familiar for you. If it doesn't, I envy you and I wish I was you. But you start off going, oh my God, I'm selling something. It's going to be amazing. This is incredible. I can't wait to do this. And then if you don't get the instant validation, and the instant validation is usually somebody buying within a time frame that feels right for me. So for me, somebody needs to buy within the first 24 hours. So Stacey, thank you for that because you kept me going. Um, but like it's, we then we very quickly go, oh shit, why did I bother? Nobody's going to buy from me, right? And then we come down into, why did I even bother? Nobody likes me. My content's crap. Um, people are unfollowing me. And, and then you start to do stupid things like look at a competitor's website and go, but they're doing stuff that's so much more amazing. And then what happens is, and this is so prevalent for small businesses that it's heartbreaking, is you go back to here and you just don't sell for ages and you fly below the radar and then you go, oh my God, I'll sell again. Fuck, this is crap. And then when you're down here, somebody will come in and sell you a sales course for 20,000 pounds or like way out of your budget. And you'll go, I need that. You do not need it. What you need is to find a way to get you through. Okay. So that could be an accountability partner. That could be the testimonials from previous clients that are written up that could be reading product reviews you know like reading if you're a values-based business which all of us are but you could be reading like the the planet's weeping the environment's destroyed if I don't keep going you know it's only going to get worse you know it could be you know whatever it is to keep you going so you're always going to go through this stage. There's always going to be a stage in a launch and a sales process where you're like, why am I bothered doing this? You know, people were coming to me for long enough before I started focusing on selling. I'll just go back to trust in the universe, right? So, 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 so common, so common. Um, so what I want you to consider is as you start to become more sales focused, because sales is a top priority in your business. It is a fundamental focus in your business. If you don't sell, if you don't make it easy for people to buy, Rosalind, if you don't make it easy for people to buy, um, it's just going to filter off. And guys, two thirds of people have reduced in the UK have been said, I said this last week, are reducing their, their expenditure on non-essential things. Two thirds of people right? So we need to be stronger at selling, at stronger at self-promotion and stepping up to the next level rather than pulling back, okay? So sales is a fundamental, it, it is a top priority in your business. What will trip you up? Will it be you? Will you self-sabotage? Um, you know, like you know you better than anyone else. Will it be energy levels? Do you have other priorities where you're like, I've got dogs, I've got kids, I've got partners, I've got a busy week, you know, like the, what's happening? Will it be outside influences, self-doubt, like the validation needed? I want you just to take a few seconds to think what will trip you up. Mm -hmm. For me, it's like I pick Ulton up tomorrow from school. So I know until next Tuesday, I don't have any time for me. Right. So I need to capitalize when Tuesday and Wednesday to even get through the next week. So I know that. So I would not ever book things in on a Saturday, you know, if that's my time with with with, with Ulton, you know, like so it's it's like been aware of that. And do I feel guilty? Yes, of course. But I'm not going to try and squeeze things in that aren't going to work. Energy levels. I know that mornings are a better energy time for me. It's better for me to focus on sales in the morning. Right. It's better for me to do a sales post after I've generated a sale, you know, um, so have a think about what's trip you up. And I would love if you pop in the chat what you feel might trip you up. If you feel safe to share. Energy level. Perfect. Rosalind. Thank you. Self-doubt. Perfect. We are not alone. Energy. Mm -hmm. Self-doubt. Hmm. See if I sold like a like holistic therapies, I would be like, here's how we boost your energy tomorrow. I would use this as market research and do a post on it tomorrow. Self-doubt. Okay. So what can you put in place 
pre-menopause and anxiety perfect I say it's perfect because they exist you know like and you don't need to become a different person in order to do it but how could you make it a little bit better right what could you put in place to make it a little bit better you know so from an energy perspective could you track your diary for a week and be like here's how my energy looks right could you turn around and say, okay, and I, like, I'm not telling anyone to overhaul their diet, but like, could you turn around and say, okay, you know, three cups of coffee is giving me anxiety. <laughs> you know, maybe I don't need that. Mm -hmm. Self-doubt. I would unpack that and be like, is it self-doubt about my abilities or my abilities to market it and try and get a little bit more information on that and what you really mean? Procrastination. Yeah, love El Hashi. I think we are twins. Mm -hmm. So how can you, how can you, A, hold yourself accountable for this and B, what needs to put in place? What do you need? To, and if you're not sure what to put in place, just do a little bit of brainstorming. Okay, Hattie needs, I need to have clarity on what specific actions I'm going to take versus broad goals. Yeah, you like a list, Hattie. Mm -hmm. And I want you to think about holding yourself accountable without needing to become a different person. You know, we're not, we're, we don't need to heal generational trauma in order to sell, like some people try and get you to, I'm like, oh, wow. I mean, I'm happy to do that, but not to sell more. Mm -hmm. So does everyone have an idea about what they'll do to hold themselves accountable? To combat self-doubt, I need to look at the evidence. Yeah, market research. Market research, what's the size of the market? What's the, you, could, you can find out the average income really, really quickly for counsellors, you know, and it's like, you know, they, they need it. They need it without, without a doubt. Be intentional with my time. If I'm tired of something, does it? Yeah. There's a really cool app called Motion. It's expensive. I'm not going to lie, but it's the Motion app. It's like, if you pay monthly, it's like £30 a month. But you put in everything that you've got to do, you date it and you give it a priority list. And then you say, these are the times I'm available and I'll put everything in. Now, I'm waiting for a bit more evidence in a few weeks because I think it could be the time in my cycle. But I've been sticking to it and I've been like, fuck it, I got it. You know, like marking mark it, mark it off. And, it, and it's much better for me than a list because I will ignore a list. I won't ignore, you know, the external frowning of an algorithm when you didn't do that or that, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. For anyone who's a reflector, you know, you might need to take some time. It's really cool, Ruth. You might need to take some time and just reflect on it, but start to think something's going to crop up to stop me focusing on selling. And what do I need? Do I need more support? Do I need external accountability? Do I need to learn different things? You only you will know, but we can start you on the road to experimenting with that. And then what needs to happen to make it easier for you to have sales as a priority? So do you need, how far in advance do you need to plan? You know, is there a certain time of the month that you need to, and I say that because, you know, I've been following with women's cycles and like when we're our most productive, I know Stacey is very, very passionate about the moon. Um, but like, you know, is there a certain time where you could batch create some content? Um, could you get a, could you get like a notebook? I'm looking like I don't have many notebooks. I've got about 10,000. Could you get a notebook that you carry, carry around for content ideas? You know, could you get an accountability buddy? What could you get that helps you make sales a priority? And I'm hoping, 
what I'm going to share with you right now is going to help you do that, is going to help you. So we're going to look at creating your sales plan. So we've looked at quite a bit of information over the past two weeks, and I know it's going to take some time to digest. So after the call, if any questions crop up, feel free to send me an email and I'm happy to record like an extra training like collating all of the questions like it would be direct to video so I'm happy to answer all of those questions so please don't leave with a sense of unknowing because I'm more than happy to do that um, but when you're looking at selling and like sales is our push period it's essentially the three things the prime in your audience you're not just going to look up and go oh my god I'm selling you know so how we prime people the length of time you need to prime is dependent on the product you know and then in order to prime your audience, as we know, to three to five successes after buying from you. And how can we create content that's like an extension of that? And we've given examples. My rallying cry is if you're going to get examples is not to get them from anyone local or the same industry local. Always look further afield. I'm like America. I pick random cities, Vancouver. My brother's in Vancouver. I'll look at Vancouver the whole time. They're absolutely shit, by the way. It's really embarrassing. But like we'll look at further, further afield. Um, and then we move on. After we've primed our audience, we let them know something's coming. We're teeing them up. We have our sales content. So as we looked at today, right? And our sales content is our sales posts that's told in all of the different ways. You know, it could be our testimonials that's told in all of the different ways. So we could take the same written testimonial. We could put it over a video or we could ask somebody to do us a video testimonial. And then we could do the hard work of writing down that content and turning it into a story. You know, and um, we think of common objections that people will naturally have for something is do I have the time for it? You know, is it will it be worth the effort? Like what's the investment that I need to put in? Will it work for me? You know, will it work for my dog who is an absolute troglodyte and just runs off anywhere? Well, this pro yeah, of course it is because it's been recommended to you by an expert. I've hand selected these products specifically for your dog because I know your dog, you know? So we start to overcome those objections without saying, oh, you might be worrying if you can afford this. <laughs> you know, we don't say that. We'll say it's worth the investment, you know, and then the investment. And then we look at the ethical urgency. So encouraging people to purchase without crossing a line that doesn't feel comfortable for you. Anything like, you know, seasonal products have a natural end date. Masterminds have a natural end date. Workshops have a natural end date. So we don't really need to worry about certain things. It's more for the push periods that we need to worry. If you're selling a product all year round, Ruth, what's your ethical urgency there? It could be a bonus. It could be all of the different things from there that we're looking at. Um, okay, so I did promise you guys something that we could plug and play, didn't I? So get, get, have you got a little bit of time just so I can show you that? Is that all right? Um, so if you give me two seconds. Oh, I'll just be, sorry, I'm on my my thing okay here we go right so this is free for you guys to edit i'm just going to come in and share the screen i just want to make sure that it's opened up for me um, okay sorry okay Right, this is free for you guys to share and make a copy and use as you like, okay? And um, obviously not to share with anyone else, but for you guys to make as many copies as you like. So when you go into this, I want you to go up to the top and just go to file and make a copy, okay? And then when you click make a copy, it will say, it'll give you a chance to rename it, okay? So you can rename it whatever you want and that will get shared in your Google Drive. OK, so if you're not ready for to use it right now, you can use it in the future. OK, and what I would be trying to get to do is to use this for as many sales periods as you can. So some people will look at this and go, there's no chance in hell I am filling in every bit of information in that. Perfect. Don't write it down. But for other people who like it, fill it in. But we'll be looking at what am I selling? OK, what's my income goal? If I don't have an income goal, what's my impact goal? Okay, so what dates am I going to be priming my audience? 
what's the launch date and what's the sale end date. So you've got all of the information there to get you planning ahead, to get you thinking about what you're going to offer. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've got a basic launch calculator. We can put in, okay, my income goal is 50,000 and the product price is, well, 1997 is there. And they'll tell me, right, I need to sell, sell 25 items because I've not moved the price enough, okay? Um, so I need to sell 200 items at 25. So that's a good way of doing, if you've got an average cost, it's a good way of doing like your budgets. If you need to cover bills, if you're, the way that you set financial goals is, I want to have this amount to contribute towards the household, we can start doing that. Um, and then what we have in here is our template, right? So this is probably the thing that I like the most. And this is the thing that we can try and do to get to learn your to get to learn a little bit more about yourself. If you are not a, a spreadsheet person, just print it off so that you can use it. But what I've tried to cover is I'm just moving this over is week one. And then if you're doing week two, it's over to the side. OK, so for lots of people, we spoke we're doing push periods. So it'll probably be two weeks. But if you're doing a four week launch, this is what it would look like. If you're doing a longer launch, I would just copy and paste that and bring it over to the site so you can easily do that. But what we're trying to do is make it as easy as possible for you to have content in here and so you can share it. So we've taken the average things, posts, so our Facebook and Instagram posts, our Facebook groups. If we've got an email newsletter, you might want to do some email content and you might want to do some stories. I'm by no means saying that you need to do all of these. But what you could hopefully do is say, OK, I'm in a pre-launch period, so I've got Monday to Friday next week. So I know I'm going to do a post and then we can just pick our emoji. All right. So over here, we've got sales posts, success posts. All of the posts that we've covered today is down on the left hand side. So you can turn around and say, OK, Monday, I am going to do what success looks like. So that's there. I'm not going to do anything in the groups. It makes absolutely no sense. You can just leave that empty or you can pop the pause in there. And for an email, I'm probably going to do an email that's very similar to the post. And that's all I'm going to do today. OK, personally, I would pull out the days that I'm not doing anything straight away. So Friday, I would probably be able to do a post, you know, but it would have to be pre-planned. But nine times out of 10 on a Friday, I'm doing nothing. All right. So get rid of the days that you're not going to be able to work before you come to this rather than go, oh, my God, I need to find all of these posts all week. Just just mark off that you're not going to do anything and just fill in the days that you are going to do the posts. So for these sections, you're mainly looking at the success posts. OK, so I'm going to do success one there and I might push. OK, if I'm going to do success one there, I'm going to go people learn about what it really takes to run a business. OK. That's my success post. OK, and that's how I'm going to show them that. Right. Tuesday, I'm probably going to do some stories. So I might take yesterday's content and do some stories and add more information to it. OK, Wednesday, I'm definitely going to do a success post on Wednesday and I'm going to do a group post on Wednesday as well for the same content. And what success will I share? I could be that, you know, people feel more confident. And what do I really mean by that? Well, when you are clear, I could just add in, you know, just, just different things about coaching. So then we just, I just fill that in for the week and I go, okay, that's week one. And then when I come down into week two, cause it's a sales period, I'm going to start straight away with my sales post. Okay. So I'm going to go straight in. Which one is that? I have it. I can't see which emoji it is straight away, but I'll, I'll just choose that one. Right. All the emojis are here on the left hand side just to make it a little bit easier for you. OK, and then I'll turn around. I'm definitely going to do a group post because I'm going to do it. Um, so I'm going to turn I'm going to walk people through the entire service on a group post. So the same group post that I'm sharing there, I'm going to share in groups and I'm going to do an email. So I know when I start to sell on day one, I'm going to do way more content. I'm probably going to be knackered on the Tuesday, so I'm not going to post anything on the Tuesday, right? But on the Wednesday, I'm going to come back and I'm going to cover the investment, right? So I know that on Wednesday, I need to talk about why it's worth investing, right? From a product perspective, 
I'm going to talk about the quality of the products and why they cost that. You know how we choose the best cut out. So you basically get to use this as you want. You can change these. You won't want to change the emojis, but you could turn around and say, okay, these posts aren't relevant to me. I can change that and you can make it relevant for your own emojis. But I've tried to cover all of the types of posts and I've tried to make it as easy as we possibly can for you. Okay. And then the last thing that I have, which is I'm going to move over here, is you can create your own to-do list. Okay. So what I'd normally put in a to-do list is that I review previous sales, I map out a sales plan and all of those things, but you would just add in there and then you can add a status on it if you wanted. This, I don't want this to become overwhelming. You're going to use this as you want to. If you don't want to use this, print it out and have it up on your wall. But if you're like, actually, I need to get used to selling. I need to get used to the types of posts I'm going to share. I need to get used to planning because I don't know enough. I'm going to start using this. How does that sound? Any questions about this before I come off? Do you like it? My ego wants to know that you do. I'm just telling you that now for like, but I won't be offended if you don't. Mm -hmm. um, so what we really want you doing is taking time to plan out your sales. And however that time looks like for you, and you go down on the left-hand side and you say, okay, I know I need to do my prime and post. So it's pretty much the success post in the first week. But then after that, I'm going to do it and I can add the notes on. And then you can print that out and put it on your wall and never look at the spreadsheet again. You know, or you can have that written down. But what we want you in the habit of doing is the consistency of knowing that I need to sell. And I need to sell by priming my audience presenting them with an offer and speaking to them in the way that they can understand. How does that sound? Almost finished, guys. And I, I'm only a minute over time, so bear with me. We're there. We're there. Um, okay. So in summary, what we're looking at is what we've discussed over the past two weeks. So if you have any questions about what's come up, send me an email. There's no question that's not that's not like inherently worthy. So send me a question and I'm more than happy to answer them because we want the simplicity of this. We know that the, the core fundamental of selling is that you speak to the people who are ready to buy, right? If you don't have them in your audience, knowing what success looks like to them after they buy from you is a much better way of growing your audience alongside added value, right? So we go back to the earlier slides where we're like the tips, the tricks. You know, so an example, taking an example of the mood board, we could do that five reasons why a mood board will help you uh, determine your style, you know, and here's how I create mood boards. Here's the special things I add into mood boards. You know, you're adding your personality, you're sharing what you like, what you don't like. And then if you're looking to sell, here's how I would create your mood board. Yeah, come, you know, you see them all the time. They do come create a mood board with me. You know, yep, that's what they do. And that's why they're doing it. So I see the process of the mood board. Now, these changes in your content, they're not huge. But we want to shift you from becoming an encyclopedia of information to being here's the value that I offer and here's why you need to buy from me. You know, so from a product based business, you know, for example, Hattie's for Fiddy and Mabel, they do these absolutely stunning designs. I'm a model on one. I've told myself I am but I don't think that I am um you know these absolutely stunning like East Lothian inspired you know so you could do like uh, you could do like uh, uh, uh an initial post of like here's the East Lothian inspired uh, uh like range you talk about the beauty of East Lothian when you add in your personality you could talk about you know here's how I combine the beauty of East Lothian the beauty of wild swimming the beauty of these animals with my unique style you know, and then you turn around and say, here's how this comes into a product and here's why this product is right for you. You know, so you can still use all three contents, but you speak to the people. Right. And you speak their language. So you're always going to ask yourself, and what was I trying to say? Right. What was I trying to say so that we can take six ser seriously? So from a sales plan perspective, if we think we're doing three things, we're priming the audience with our successes we've got the sales content our sales posts that can be shared in all of the different ways and um, we can overcome objections through testimonials 
um, to talking about the value that we offer, to talking about the time and the effort. Will it work for me? And then the third thing is using ethical urgency and following up to get people to buy now. Right. You know, and that's very different to forcing a sale and hustling a sale. No means no. And let's give them the information before they make that decision to make a yes more likely. Yeah. And providing all of that information and just to be kind to yourself and keep them going. I would be lying if I didn't say the market isn't harder for people right now. And I think it is. But I think that you've got a massive advantage because when things are hard, the, the temptation for small business owners is to pull back and just to go, people don't want to support small business. It's, it's a huge temptation because nobody has given us the clear path. So I'm hoping that with the spreadsheet, you could use that in a year's time, in two years time, and keep using that to grow your sales and to boost things. Um, I mean, I'm going to be shameless, but I do want to let you know the other ways that I can support you. And I want to let you know of one way in particular, and that's the Epic Academy, which is our monthly membership. And the reason why I think this is amazing and for people who want to master sales is because we give you that ongoing support. It's like, you know, we can learn all of these things, but the, the success is in the implementation and how we implement that. So what we offer in Epic, the investment's £45 a month, and we have weekly masterminds every Thursday. We have monthly goal sessions, so we set your goals for the month and sales planning. So on the last Thursday of every month, we plan your content for the next month and any set sales that we're looking for. Um, we've got a train involved. We've got a massive train involved here. We've got sales training, content training, product-based training. We've got mommy banter. Look, we were very lucky to get her before she absolutely exploded. She's done some social media training for us. All of that back catalog is included in there, but also you get like an amazing community and we even go skinny dipping, but don't tell anyone that. And we've even got like this amazing community of women that are there to support you. So I'm not going to do hard sale on that, but if you were looking at how do I get the accountability? How do I get people around to kind of pull me out when things are getting tough? That's exactly why we're set up and we're there every Thursday um, to support each other. Um, so we've only gone seven minutes over, but we do have time for a Q&A if you're okay with that. So tell me what questions you have and how I can help you before we finish up. Is that where do we get the spreadsheet, Ruth? I will email you the link. Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm going to read out Hattie's. I've been a member of Epic for a couple of years and honestly couldn't read it highly enough. You can see it all there. I won't, I won't dine out on that one. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Hattie. Sorry, I feel like I'm hogging this call tonight. I don't mean to. Um, I love all this stuff that you're teaching us. It's amazing, right? And my my resistance is I don't have a following. <laughs> So I have a following on my counselling social yeah. media. That's purely for clients. But because I'm setting up this new business, I'm targeting counsellors and I don't really have a following. So I feel like I'd be putting posts out and there's nobody there. So it, it definitely. And I think I, I, I think based on what Nancy was saying earlier, she can relate to that. Can anyone else relate to that? Yeah. Um, perfect. Ruth. And, and I think this is the core stage for experimentation because that's how you're going to validate what you're offering. You know, so I would not say to anyone, go out and launch a signature product or a signature therapies that you're going to be selling for the rest of your life. I would say for the first one to three years of business is that you're finding yourself, you're finding what works, what doesn't work. And this can naturally, evolve. I know you've been running your business for quite a while, but what I mean is when you're doing something new, it's like you're learning and you're growing. So it's almost like you can remove that pressure because you're seeing sales as market research. And you're seeing how you promote yourself and how you engage with people as market research, right? And um, I'll share the interview with the, that I did with Rob Moore a few years ago. I don't know if any of you follow Rob Moore, um, mm -hmm. but like he did an amazing thing because I was asking him about like mums in business and how we do it. And it was like the money in the now and the money in the future. So if you're looking to grow your audience, I would, I would take a step back and go, what four things does somebody need to know about me to know to work with me? OK, what's the four things? And it's kind of like the successes, but it's the earlier stage. Right. So they need to know that I help um, counselors build sustainable businesses. Right. They need to know that I've got a track record in doing it myself. 
right? They need to know that there's a mental health absolute crisis out there, which means the need is huge, but you have to be visible, you know? And from there, you start to create the different content ideas. Yeah. Okay. And, 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 and I, is there something about using hashtags or like how, how will people pick that up like how will the algorithm show that to the right people so are you looking to do more online than offline I mean Probably. more online than our face-to-face are, are, yeah, are, yeah 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 face-to-face will be exhausting face-to-face <laughs> yeah do you feel there'll be more Edinburgh based or more UK wide it can be UK wide yeah UK wide so I would start a combination if you're doing more UK wide a combination between I wouldn't pay for adverts till you've tested what you're saying. Okay. So I would do a combination between hashtags, Mm -hmm. but you're far more likely to grow if you start finding Facebook groups where this counselor is already in it. Yeah. I'm I'm in a few of them, but they're very strict about what you can post. I'm just kind of commenting on people's posts and getting my name. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. I know this is for another day, but I just kind of thought, right, okay, I've, this yeah. is amazing, but yeah, I would be posting this to nobody. <laughs> but, but I would still I would still post to nobody because people okay. will scroll back. Yeah, and just right. put some yeah. hashtags, setting up private yeah. practice, yeah. and then it might get picked up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then I would make a list of having like a Facebook strategy, right? Yeah. So a Facebook group strategy. And the reason it's groups is because we it, the demographics the age they're in groups for this kind of information so you could set up your own facebook groups which is like counselors and therapists scotland yeah something like that yeah, yeah and then you could actually have it whereby you build your awareness through providing information and that you know and make okay. it super if it's not there but there's also there's obviously egg egg glasgow egg dundee I would look for similar groups down south. I would look at, you know, there's there's a lockdown. There's got a, there's a lockdown Facebook group that's got like over a hundred thousand members. There's Facebook groups out there. Yeah, would let you do business posts and promo posts as well. Yeah, thank mm-hmm. you. Yeah, and but all roads lead back to that core message of uh, yeah, all forward, forward posting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. and okay, then maybe thank you. and maybe you could approach maybe your cell for those two hundred people mm-hmm. that you did that event to is I'm now live on Facebook. Follow me for hints. Yeah, so they all got a PDF with all my marketing on it and I had about five new followers. I was like, God, I was hoping for at least 200. (laughs) So so if I was doing an event like that again, I would turn around. Oh, thanks, Stacey. Thank you. If I was doing an event like that, I would turn around and I would at the beginning, I would have my social media up there and I would turn around and say, guys, I'm just going to give you a few minutes to follow me right now yeah okay just give it at the beginning at the beginning (laughs) you're good (laughs) at the beginning if I was locally like Nancy you kind of think about what's the roads that lead to me offices on George Street right we want people within the vicinity of George Street so we start to look at actually the collateral that I create for media also has to be in posters you know and then it's well what do I put on that poster and it's like it's for your business as a whole you know here's the center Here's the therapies that that are offered. And I would definitely have a QR code. If you've not used Canva or anything like that, they'll let you create a QR code in there for free. But I would give them a call to action. So it could be like 20% off your your, your first therapies, open an offer, 20% off your first therapies in May and June. I'm sorry, July and August. Um, We went to Gusto for lunch today when none of my friends would speak their minds. And they have a QR code as you go in that's like 20% off your next meal. So I'm already in there and they're encouraging me to come back. I mean, they'd probably only be serving it to us by the time we'd eaten our first one, but you know, it's like they're trying to get you back in. So start to think about what does success look like for a local business and for you, Nancy, I would learn from the restaurants because they were doing it really well now at getting people in the door. You know, and what's the first thing they do? They ask someone their name, you know? Yeah. And you you'll engage with them, you know, and you could have an offer for the businesses on George Street, which could be X amount for or you could have like a corporate booking or something, you know. And again, you're doing that until you start to see who's coming in the door. Am I capturing their emails? What are the other things that I can sell? And then you take that content onto your social media as well. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Okay. next question. Catherine or Sam, any questions as well? Or also, yeah, crack on. Yes, I suppose I do have a question. So because I'm sort of, I suppose it's similar to what Nicola was saying 
um, initially was doing the one-to-one -one dog training and now I've got the sales, sort of more product side of the business. Um, so at the moment, they're the same social media, Facebook, all of that's the same because I feel like it's the same demographic. But then how do I structure my posts so I'm talking to both people? Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, th there's lots of different ways that you could do it. You could start to use different colors in your posts. So I know that's super basic, but you could use one color for the training post and another color for the product based posts. Mm -hmm. And then like the little things when you're talking about doing the dogs and having like the little voiceovers, you can do like the background color for that text for something specific. Mm -hmm. You could do like an introductory post that's saying, you know, um, you could do like a the little dog going things are going to change around here, you know, <laughs> you know, or, or like I, I know it sounds cheesy, but like you asked, we delivered. You know, we constantly get asked about the best products when we're out there. And that's why we've gone down this route. You know, okay. over time, you might look to separate them. But I would mm -hmm. definitely, I, I would, again, I would use your existing clients as market research mm -hmm. for the viability of this on a larger scale. Okay, great. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But then it was just, yeah, how are they going to fit yeah. together? But yeah, in the future, maybe then I can think about separating them. But for now, it's fine to, to yeah. keep them together. And I like the idea of, yeah, the different colours, because I've already got, like, I use a lot of blue. Mm -hmm. That's sort of my, my branding colour, so maybe a slightly different yeah. Yeah. colour, maybe more like a turquoise for the yeah. shop, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, really and, and give it like a cool name like I don't know if you have a dog and you could call it like and I, I, obviously I know you've got your business name but it could be like their their recommendations and you could then I would send out personalized emails if if at all possible I know that might be a lot of work right now but see if I got a personalized email especially as a mother going okay this would be perfect for your child I would love you and then you could segment you could segment them in an email list because I just think you know even if there's more work involved for you to manually send that out, I think you'll sell a lot more products in the long run. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Anything you're not sure of? So if you're, if there's anything, so going forward, like if you want to share your sales post with me via email, like anything like that, go. The fundamentals of these is not, the fundamentals of sales is not going to change, right? So even if you work on building your audience for the next one month, two months, three months, when you decide that you're ready to come back to this, it's not going to have changed. The tactics might have changed, you know, reels might be more popular than one and more popular than the other. But like the, I need to build a relationship. I need to speak to the right people. I need to do it in a voice that's my own, that stands out from the crowd. It's not going to change. Absolutely not going to change. So come back to it. For the people who are like, who have the market and are selling, I want you to start like feeling into doing this on a regular basis as well and making it a system that feels right for you. So there might be more work with the spreadsheet in, in the first sales round. But then I want you to kind of, in an ideal world, you would know in three months time, six months time, what you're promoting right where see like I know Catherine you've got like your terms and they'll be all planned out but like in an ideal world if I knew I was going to be busy after Christmas I would be creating content in August for that or I would have a Trello board of content that I bring out every year you know and having those little things and um, but it'd be really cool if we share in the chat is like what's the one thing that you're committing to doing for your business after the two master classes Perfect, thank you. Yep, yep, perfect, Rosalyn. Yep, mm hmm Creating content, thanks, Nicola. Catherine, Nancy, how are you feeling? I won't be offended if I need to go and lie down or let it's like 10 to 10, fuck off. I guess I'm not going to take offense of that either. 
I'm struggling to come up with something cohesive, but I've got lots of I'm feeling energized and and um, inspired. So that's good. <laughs> Thank you. The specific was just not coming out. <laughs> oh, no, I feel your pain. I was like, like looking at my brownie going, oh, my energy levels are dipping. <laughs> I haven't got anything specific either other than the QR codes I'm like right I'm really going to make that happen now um which and also just you talking about sales I never really thought about sales <laughs> I've always treated it like a hobby um and I've, I've had the luxury of that being part-time but now I need to be full-time it's like oh yeah there needs to be sales so you've really sort of made me realize you know how important so yeah. thank you Oh, thank you. And don't just, is, is it like that Jahari's window, you know, is like the stuff that you are doing that you don't see that you're doing. And there's probably a lot of this that you naturally do anyway. So I think for lots of people who's like, you know, it was more like a hobby. It's like you were probably doing a lot of the sales, but it didn't have the added pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so keep doing yeah. what you were doing, just step it up a notch. Yeah. Well, but the thing you said about the little charts that you get, um, I just thought, oh, I've never set back an income goal. I just tend to, I see it as um, fun tokens. <laughs> I never keep track of anything. And I'm like, oh, I need, yeah, actually goals, that's a really good idea. So thank you. I feel like you've opened my eyes to like business as opposed to just thinking, oh, I'll just go and do a PhD or I'll go and do some more training in, in another. Yeah. It's like, oh, no, I need to learn business yeah <laughs> but you made a really good point there so I'd really love to know by sure who here is motivated by money where that's the driving force in their business no me neither like I'd be like no I'm like I'd do this all night if I could but I say I always find it bizarre then that it's like you know we're treating women like they either have a goal to earn x amount of money or they have a goal to fulfill their dreams through their business you know where for lots of us we're in it because we really quite like it and it suits our lifestyle but that's so fucking boring you know no one's going to write a book on that but I think that they should I think that we should write the book on that because again it's coming back well what motivates me you know what's the driving force and I think that level of self-awareness will have you sell way more than chasing after money if it's not your driving force mm -hmm. but you'd still have the benchmark of what do I need to make this worth my while yeah. mm -hmm. as opposed to say I want 20 grand months in, in in year one you could be like well I want to cover all of my bills and have this amount of salary you know or I suppose I had a, an alternative I was thinking right so I averaged at part time I would see 12 so I thought right what would a full-time thing be and it would be 30 people and there wasn't and actually I've gone up from like four to 22 within like a month sort of in a week as in the change and I'm still I'm doing things free for people and it's like oh yeah I should really charge people as in there is an equation between the yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah yeah so so uh, yeah all of the stuff that you said has helped yeah. thank you yeah yeah and it comes back to the value people and and, and you know we want to help people but people look, we're, we're in it we're in a world where we're like it's all about adding value adding value adding value adding value but there comes a time where people don't value that value you yeah, know that's the whole yeah. thing about like people when I trained years ago in hypnotherapy I remember them saying to me put a really high like this was like back in the 90s and it was charged 250 pounds for a session which then that was a really a lot of money I don't know if you remember that long ago um and I thought no that's really awful but they said that they will be so much more invested in the outcome so much more likely to be committed to it if they paid a lot of money for something whereas I went and did the opposite I did worked in a gym and did free sessions and didn't understand why I wasn't busy and so then I did 50% discount fails and I got really busy and it was like people didn't value the the free stuff yeah so, yeah 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 there's a really cool reel on that I don't know if anyone's seen it it's like a bottle of water can cost you like 50p here and two pounds here like in 20 quid in a restaurant it's like so it's where you are you know it's like just move but then that's 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 how you position yourself in the market and there's lots of and I think from the from people who were selling something that's a massive jump like so anyone who's selling like a therapy or anything where people have to make a jump you know it's very easy to sell that jump so that's why life coaching has come in and taken over because they're selling that jump that people are taking you know so you have to really come back to the experience the education and selling from the beginning to the middle and the middle to the end and describing the entire process and the transformation that's happened throughout rather than because for lots of our nervous systems we can't buy that jump does that make sense 
you know and I think people are saying oh do this you know because I saw I saw a lady and she's like this she was saying take out a credit card to do her coaching to do her business coaching and I was like and she was like you know if you don't invest in yourself and I was like I do believe from an energetic perspective but I would never say to somebody take out a credit card because we don't know their history on money we don't know their history on like any of these different things so why would you say that to somebody because that might leave them in a, and but then it's like they're selling the jump you know you're not selling the jump but you can position yourself at the higher end of the market does that make sense yeah and we're like here's the beginning here's the middle and here and here's the end and and then the people who have been scorned in the past and who've got a history will be like I much more appreciate this because I'm seeing the entire process I'm not just been told because people people who are buying the jump don't have faith that they're going to get there does that make sense and that's why the coaching industry is topping a little bit now because they're not so I get fascinated by this because they're not selling to the middle they're not saying here's what's happened here here's here's how I'll, I'll get you through when you never want to come to counseling again here's what I'll do just do me a post on that because how many people have not come back here's what'll happen is I will phone you. I'll stay in contact with you. I'll do these things and you will come back, but it'll be, a, does that make sense? And it's like, that's so much better than saying we'll be cured in six weeks. So much sense. And you're just brilliant. <laughs> oh, thank you. I just, I'm fascinated by people. Like I love people. The, the, the woman in Gusto thinks I'm horrible. So we balance that one out today. It's like doing a confidence course, but I'm not going to complain about the service. It's so funny. Sorry, they're like talking to my talking to my friend's little baby, going hello, and I think there's a bit bad. <laughs> oh, um, that's all. I'll start waffling now because I'm on a bit of a sugar high. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I'm not even joking. Um, but thank you so much. I'll send you that out and just use the spreadsheet. But if anybody's got any questions after you've kind of reflected on today, please don't be afraid to email, and we'll crack on from there. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.